हरि ओम दीर्घायुष्मान भव सर्वव्याधि निवारण प्राप्तिरस्तु सर्व ऐश्वर्य अभिवृद्धि भवतु सर्व मंगलानि भवन्तु स्त्रीभ्य दीर्घ सुमंगली भव कन्या स्त्रीभ्य शीघ्रमेव विवाह प्राप्तिरस्तु तथास्तु सो आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग दिस इज माय पार्ट नंबर 31 इन इंग्लिश कंपैरेटिव रिलीजियंस हिंदूइज्म वर्सेस क्रिश्चियनिटी देयरफॉर द मेन पॉइंट इज it is the it was i would say it was the method of the european missionaries especially missionaries and nowadays by our indian missionaries too that uh, jesus saves and jesus is the prince of peace peace means shanti that never in bible it says om shanti om shanti om shanti as it is said in our vedic mantras i have not seen i do not know much but when i was going through the bible i had certain uh, certain f- uh, facts and figures which i thought really did not convince me <clears throat> for example if you go to matthew 10 if you go to verse number 34 matthew says jesus says through matthew <laughs> he says do not suppose that i have come to bring peace in the earth i do not come to bring peace but a sword <laughs> that's what matthew 10 shloka or verse number 34 now you go to verse number 35 and in verse number 35 it is uh, uh, slightly different and what he says his uh, <coughs> um, jesus says for i have come to turn a man against his father a daughter against her mother a daughter in law against her mother in law <laughs> all these things it is there in verse number 35 that is to turn them against means to fight each against uh, each other or to have a difference of opinion against each other well i really got confused that i don't accept because i want peace in the family and jesus says in 36 the next uh, verse a man's enemies will be the members of his own household <laughs> so he want uh, there appears to be he wants to create a tension a division amongst his amongst the own family members now for this uh, the missionaries or the indian uh, 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 preachers would say no no he didn't mean like that he said that if you really love him or go after him you there will be a problem within the house because some may be for this and some may be against this against what for what against being a disciple of jesus some may some of the family members may welcome it but some may be against so that is a reason why well i will come to that later so a man's enemies he says will be his own member uh, members of the own family that is in verse number 36 and go to verse number 37 he says jesus says through matthew anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me <laughs> anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me that is you should not love your parents you should not love your children you should love only jesus if they do love then he they do not become his disciples at all that's a cost of being his disciple well <laughs> i do not accept this i would like to love my father i would love to like my mother my parents are important my father is important mother brother sister wife children son daughter i have to serve them that's what i believe i do not want any god or any prophet who says don't uh, love your mother and father and brother and sister and wife i do not accept i do not want such a guru for me an acharya for me and even a god who speaks like that to me because hinduism says matru devo bhava first mother father acharya and uh, your guest everybody your own parents your own brothers sisters vasudeva kudumbam wife there will be unnecessary tension there will be unnecessary separation in the family if you don't love your uh, brothers and sisters and wife is it not I mean common sense use our common sense and another thing he says jesus in saint luke if you go 
chapter 10 verse 51 Jesus appears to have said whether Jesus said or not I do not know but that's what St. Luke writes do you think I have come to, I uh, do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth no I have come to divide people against each other <laughs> and in 52 he says from now on say 52 uh, chapter 10 of St. Luke from now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, two against three. And in 53, he says, they will be divided father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, all these things. Well, if this sort of a division is there, where is a question of prince of peace? Jesus being described as a prince of peace, prince of division, he is only dividing. And St. Louis, if you go, verse 22, chapter 36, and he says, I did, uh, uh, in chapter 34, uh, Matthew says, uh, through Jesus, 34, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword, I told you. And in Luke 22, chapter 22, verse 36, Jesus says, and if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak, means the dress. And by what? Well, where is the question of peace being here? And in St. Louis verse, chapter 14 from 23 and all, I have quoted earlier, he says, hate your father, hate your mother, hate your brother, hate your sister, hate your wife and hate your own self if you want to be my disciple in 23. And 29, he says, that is the cost of you uh, if you want to be my disciple. Well, I am sorry. I would not accept any Acharya, any prophet, any God who says, hate your mother, hate your father, hate uh, your sisters or hate your brothers or hate your children, family. I do not want such a, a, such a prophet for me. Because the intention is to serve others, service to others. Service to others and especially if you do not look after your aged mother, especially if they are aged, aged parents, mother, father and all, you are not duty worthy. You are committing a sin. Service to others. That's what our God says. You do all service and finally you come to me. It's okay. But if you don't love your mother who has given life to you, your parents, your father, poor father who has run from pillar to post, borrowed, begged money to educate you. I do not want any guru who tells me that you have to hate them first. You have to hate. Your family has to be divided. If you hate your wife, how the family will run? That's why in the West a lot of things are happening. Nowadays, they don't believe Christianity at all. They don't believe at all. They don't go to the churches at all. You please go. I am in Europe. I have went there complete in Europe. I told you last time, right from Italy, Turin to Vatican. I went there. Everybody, churches are empty. In UK, churches are empty. In Italy, churches are empty. Most of them are atheists. And some who have heard about Hindu philosophy are following Hinduism, especially Scott. See, the main point is, if you start hating, the word hate comes. Then, see, if the word renounce comes also, I can understand to an extent. Renounce your father, renounce your mother in St. Louis. I can understand. But if you say hate, hate is a very strong negative word. You cannot hate anybody. Even you cannot renounce your parents and go to a, pro, a, a acharya. If you renounce your parents, who will look after them? Especially when they are aged. If you don't serve your family... Who will look after your family, your brothers and sisters, your duty bound? Human nature is to first look with their family first. Then you look after your other people. If you start fighting with your own wife, then how you can live in this world? There will be a family commotion. We don't want any Acharya who tells like that. Sorry, I would not accept. I am a senior citizen. I would not accept any Acharya who tells me, hate your mother. And then only you can come to me. Then only you are fit enough to be my disciple. Renounce, okay. In sannyasa, you renounce and go to the forest and meditate when you are aged. And you don't have your parents or anybody by your side. They would have already gone. 
but when you are very uh, hate your father hate your wife hate your children your son and your daughter that is absolutely not acceptable so where, now and jesus also says it seems i told you in um, uh, in st luke luke i don't know how they pronounce luik or luke or lucas and all they have in chapter 22 verse number 36 he says if you uh, don't have a sword sell your cloth sell your cloak and buy what now where is the question of jesus being prince of peace see these things jesus must have been a very good prophet we are not denying i am not denying must have been or several people by the name of uh, yeshua or yehova must be there they would have preached good because in those times in israel people could have been unruly they were tribes tribal practices are different they never knew the concept of a god a superior power the creator so they would have behaved in a unruly way not conforming to love affection and the principles of ahimsa so for that if some preacher comes and preaches it's acceptable definitely it's acceptable but if somebody writes like that in the name of jesus it is not acceptable it is not a perfection everywhere in vedas if you say love your neighbor only they would say even confucius chinese scholar he says what you want for yourself yourself want for others or two first if you want food for you you want that food for others too everybody says every religion has those things but i don't know anybody who says of hate your father hate your mother hate your brother hate your sisters that is too much is not i have come here to establish peace not peace i have come here to establish division not peace not i have come here to establish not peace but division do you think i have come here to establish peace jesus asks no i did not come here to bring peace but a sword he says in i, I told you already in matthew 10 shlok uh, verse number 34 this is all there but they also say that jesus has told that when he was supposed to be caught a man drawing a sword will be killed by a sword that is also there but these are also there so there are contradictory verses are there in bible especially i did not like the verse of st luke 23 there all these matthew verses number uh, chapter number 10 34 35 36 and 37 shlokas division creating division between brother and sister and mother in law and daughter in law all those things and when st luke in 22 in 36 he says sell your cloak that is your vastram your your dress your shirt and buy a sword now if these things are told in the question of being a prince of peace who said i do not know but there is absolutely some verses do not indicate jesus to be a prince of peace you can bring in another some other arguments to justify certain mistakes as anybody does normal human being does nobody accepts their mistake but those are not acceptable therefore the question is that he is a prince of peace <coughs> and uh, he has come to establish peace may not be 100% true it's not true also when you read these verses that is what i want to impose upon and secondly i have already established there is nothing called resurrection we have reincarnation resurrection means even if you die for a second a, do- a god does not die even for a, a, a bo- bosons a hick bosons second trillionth of a 10000th uh, of a trillion because the world will not function 10000th of a trillion of a second even if it dies the world cannot function then you can bring a lot of other arguments like uh, hinduism it is there see every religion has its own faults or every religion can have its own mistakes that's why swami vivekananda said we will have a universal religion that's why richard dawkins also wants to avoid fanaticism and killings in the name of religion and he says atheism buddha says do your actions good eight fold noble path much established before christ that is enough if we follow that is enough if we follow our vedas let noble thoughts pour from all sides 
let us treat the entire world as our family so when you start converting people telling your religion is uh, satanic and mine is uh, the best that the counter arguments you are already triggering a counter argument in those minds some poor people out of poverty or money may get converted see if they want money what to do nothing wrong but i am asking those poor people also fall hinduism don't say that only that is the true god there is a god and now there is the powerful law of psychology of the universe which says laws of attraction so if you think too much of sorrow sorrows will come to you if you think of happiness and goodness they will come to you the electrons of happiness the electrons of prosperity the electrons of goodness will come to you these are called positive energies and every religion say like that that they don't worship idol but some form or the other a cross is out of wood or steel even for uh, islam they have something like a a kaaba or they bring a draw in in tamil nadu and all i have seen some sort they want for concentration and nothing wrong nothing wrong so let us not criticize that you should cannot worship idols idols means for concentration it is my way of worship my culture asks me to worship in a certain way so we worship now every religion they have all lost their cultures i have told you last time itself egyptians have lost their egyptian civilization the sumerian sumerian civilization the babylonian civilization all gone the assyrian civilization gone mediterranean all gone civilizations the roman civilization is gone the hellenistic civilization of the greeks gone greeks are reviving it from 2017 the hellenistic civilization only our indic civilization the vedic civilization is there because we hindus follow tradition of worship that is our culture nothing to be criticized about it and no god has got something superior power or miracles done and all over the other these are all simply said by these missionaries that's it the thing called miracles every in religion death takes place every religion has its uh, shortfalls no god comes and helps people there are people who die in all religions well while they worship while they go to temples while they go to churches while they go to mosques accidents do happen we cannot simply say mine is the best but one thing the hindu philosophy is one of the finest philosophies that's what all universities in the world in their libraries and in their classes philosophical department they can't have a philosophy department without hindu philosophy because it has philosophy the hindu philosophy is the vedas the bhagavad gita the without bhagavad gita practicality is lost that's what mahatma gandhi himself says every day he opens one page of bhagavad gita every day he gets a new idea therefore my dear friends with this i am ending this uh, uh, session part number 31 and till such time i continue my next part puhuyat tavat shubhamangalam arihyom